All right, everyone. Hi, we're going to get started in just a minute. Um, I'm doing this simultaneously on Zoom and Instagram Live, so I'm just going to get that going as well. All right, we are live and we'll get started with some gua sha. So um, if you guys want to type questions into the chat box throughout this, I'll be checking them definitely at the end um, and possibly throughout. We shall see. And the first thing I need to tell you is that since you are here joining us on Saturday doing some learning, um, we have a special code for you and it is Saturday student. Um, that's already in the Zoom chat box for those on Instagram Live. It's just Saturday student all together. And that code will get you 20% off um, the tonic and oil on wildling.com. So if you have the stone and you haven't quite made the plunge yet to get the product, now is a great time. Um, or if you just need to replenish, then you can do that as well. Now, um, quick tech check, it is Mercury Retrograde. Um, for those on Instagram Live, can you just give me a wave or say yes if you can hear me and on Zoom as well. Um, just say like, yes, we can hear you, we can see you, everything's great because I'm really good at massaging faces. I'm not so good at technology, so this is outside my wheelhouse. Oh great, Zoom is looking good. Awesome. I'm getting some thumbs up on Instagram live. Wonderful. 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 Well, I'm so excited to be here with all of you. I'm in my new office that is not yet put together here in California. We just moved into this place on the first. So I've got this like electrical box over here. Anyway, it's fine. It's great. It's wonderful. So we'll start off with some gua sha basics. Now, for those that aren't familiar with gua sha at all, we're gonna go over just some basics with the stone, contraindications, when to do gua sha, all of that. And then um, after we go over just like some bare bones basics with that, we're gonna go into the Empress Wand and how you can use that integrated with your current gua sha routine and how it can also be used on its own for deep muscle release, pressure point work, um, all of this really, really juicy, amazing stuff. I, I mean, this is just such a valuable tool to me. Just last night I was playing with it while I was just, you know, sitting there um, watching a show and just getting into the jaw muscle a bit and it's phenomenal how much it can release with just intention and being with it. So um, gua sha comes from traditional Chinese medicine, right? And in traditional Chinese medicine it's done very vigorously on the body and it translates to scraping for sand. Gua is to scrape and sand is that, that red, those red sort of dots that come up with the very vigorous 
gua sha technique. Now, we're really not trying to do that on the face. So facial gua sha to me is an adaptation of gua sha done on the body. It's much more gentle. It's much more refined. We're still trying to really um, access stagnation and release it from the tissue. But the way that we're doing it is obviously tailored for our delicate, gentle facial skin rather than that vigorous technique done on the body. In addition, when we are very mindful of our technique and actually, um, you know, sort of get over that, that hump of the learning curve and put in a little bit of time and effort like all of you are doing today, we can work with the tissue in a very precise refined way where we are actually starting to create more firming, sculpting, toning, lifting, and that all comes from doing this more mindful, um, slow technique. Now, contraindications for facial gua sha. Um, any like raised beauty marks or moles, you really just want to work around, especially, you know, a lot of folks will have them like on the neck or shoulders and just being mindful, knowing where they are for you. So you can simply either work around them. Um, you know, if I had one here, I would just go maybe in front of it and behind it, or you can do a little speed bump. So you're sort of coming up with a stroke and then skipping over that raised beauty mark, mole, skin tag, anything that you really don't want to be sort of scraping on the skin. Now you can use that same sort of workaround or speed bump technique for um, like any active breakouts. If you have just like one or two active breakouts but the rest of your skin is pretty clear, then you can use that same technique to work around active breakouts. That's another contraindication. We don't go over skin that is acutely inflamed, actively infected, anything like that. Now, if you have um, acne that's sort of more all over, then there are a few techniques you can still do, including, um, you know, using the wand for some pressure point work can be really great for folks that can't have that, like, dragging across the skin. All right. Now we, oh, there's more. I almost forgot. Injections. Injections are definitely a contraindication, especially when they're fresh, when they're new. Um, they are meant to stay where they are put. So for example, let's talk about Botox here for a second. If someone had Botox between the eyebrows, that would be freezing the eyebrows from making an expression. And it's meant to stay exactly there. If you have fresh Botox, you do deeper gua sha work, there's a small risk that it could move over and then paralyze the eye area that you really don't intend to be paralyzing. So that is why fresh Botox is a contraindication. I avoid working with it uh, with my clients until it's almost completely worn off. And the reason being, if we were to, you know, get in there, do some deep work, release the wrinkles, release, you know, the lines that are forming, release the tension, that's not necessary when someone has Botox because the Botox is literally taking care of the skin concern. Once it's worn off is a great time to really get in there, um, I think that you know, gua sha can be an amazing alternative to Botox. And even if you are a believer and you want to do it, do some gua sha in between your injections because it's going to help keep the vitality of the skin going strong and it's going to keep the circulation moving um, and prevent some of that like long-term atrophy, dullness, super like a gray stagnant skin that happens after it's been numbed for years. So getting the gua sha in between. Fillers, similar. So let's say I had filler in the nasolabial groove. That would be taking care of that line, right? I would no longer have that deep line that I was so concerned about. And therefore, I don't really need to be doing gua sha over that area. Again, that filler, we really wanna keep it where it is. So I just work around it. It's really easy if you have injections to just avoid those specific areas and the rest of your skin will benefit from the gua sha. Um, another thing to be aware of is that if you do have an injection like Botox and you like it, doing gua sha over it is actually going to break it down faster. We're speeding up the skin's metabolism, all of the circulation. So if you want to keep your Botox, you also don't want to gua sha over it. 
Um, for any other, uh, or actually, uh, so some other skin inflammation concerns, uh, aside from breakouts, would be like very active rosacea. You could simply, you know, work around very inflamed areas. Otherwise, gua sha can be amazing for clearing excess heat from the skin over time. And if there was something like a sunburn, anything like that, you would just chill until your skin was calm again and then resume the gua sha. So any inflammation, infection, injections, raised moles, we work around. If you have a specific health issue and you're not sure if gua sha is right or safe for you, you most likely have a doctor or a healthcare practitioner that is helping you with that specific health issue. And that's the person that you can ask if facial massage that stimulates lymphatic flow is right for you. So now getting into some of the nitty gritty, we always start gua sha with a clean face. Um, so after washing your face, you would then apply your tonic and oil. So we, with Wild Ling, you know, I started doing gua sha and teaching gua sha courses before this product line existed, before we created it. And people were constantly asking me, what are the best products to use for gua sha? And we went ahead and made them because we really wanted to make the best products for gua sha and it just didn't exist. So we start with tonic and the wildling tonic has sweet fern, damask rose. Sweet fern is one of the biggest lymph stimulators in the plant kingdom and it smells like this just like dewy, mossy forest floor, which is so rich and so beautiful, especially for city dwellers. I swear this tonic helped me get through living in New York City with very little access to plant life. It just like really smells like some sort of fairy forest. Um, and we're doing the hydration layer. So basic skin layering sort of rules in the holistic world is if we're going to use a skin oil um, or a balm, an oil-based product, we use hydration first. Otherwise, the oil or oil-based product really just kind of sits on top of the skin and doesn't absorb very well. And so we start with the tonic. And again, multi-benefit, we're getting the lymph going with this. It smells beautiful, helps when we engage our senses, smell, touch, all of that helps us already start to get into our bodies, get out of the mind, get into the body, get into the senses. Um, the scent, the nose is right attached to the limbic brain, so it goes straight to our primal brain. Next, we apply our oil. Again, we you know, made the best gua sha oil we could fathom. Our, uh, my wildling co-founder, Jill, created this. Um, it has the balm of Gilead, which is phenomenal for fine lines, healing skin, and moving chi. It has this like warming effect on the skin. But a lot of our studio clients that have breakout prone skin um, really, really love this as well because of the antibacterial benefits of the balm of Gilead. Um, and it's antibacterial without being at all drying like so many products are. So that's really beautiful with that. And it actually acts as its own preservative system in this oil. So we don't need anything else in there. We also have a resin complex that's amazingly healing for the skin. So it's frankincense, myrrh, etc. These beautiful resins and it's all whole plant infusion. We don't use essential oils. So that way you're actually getting a really broad spectrum of benefits from these uh, resins that you don't get with the essential oil. So you're getting benefits from frankincense, for example, from this oil that you don't get with frankincense essential oil. So clean skin, tonic and oil. Again, if you apply the code Saturday student, all caps, um, actually I don't know if it's case sensitive, but Gianna sent it to me all caps. So Saturday student, all caps, you'll get 20% off our oil and tonic if you haven't already tried it or you need to re-up. Okay, so we've got our skin prepped and I'm totally just pretending I'm like not for real, for real doing this right now because I have so much to share with you that it's not all going to be gua sha or like active, active gua sha. So after getting all that ready, I thought I had a hair tie, we get into a little bit of technique and what's important for that. So the direction is super important and we're basically moving either up or down on the neck. We're doing sort of vertical strokes mostly on the neck and then from the center of the line outwards on the face. 
your angle. That's going to be about 15 degrees. So rather than it being this sort of like 90 degree situation, you want it to be almost flat to the skin. As my coworker Samantha, who I now see is on the Instagram Live, says it's just enough room for your little thumb to be there on the tool and sneak underneath so that it's almost flat to the skin. I think you guys can see that really well. And the thing that starts to happen when we have this really close angle to the skin is that you start to get this like slight pull. We're not like tugging at the skin in a way that is detrimental. It's this subtle slight pull that I actually find incredibly soothing to the nervous system. So we start to feel that slight pull and that's when we start to work on the lymph, the fascia. So many of the benefits really come from that correct angle and the sensation. And you wanna really feel it when you're doing it as well. So being able to breathe, again, the, the beautiful aroma um, of the products can help you to get into your body a little bit more already, but then breathing, feeling the sensations of the tool, really getting into your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest nervous system. That is the place where healing happens. That is where skin detoxification, skin healing, all of our glow is very dependent on being able to get into this rest and digest nervous system on a very regular basis. And with our high stress lives, of course, um, you know, gua sha is just one of many tools that we can utilize at the end of the day or beginning of the day to re-enter our bodies and slow down a little bit. So we've got the direction, angle, the pull. Now we need the anchor. So when you have that slight pull right here, I'm at 15 degrees, I'm getting that little pull. You can already see it pulling at the side of my mouth a bit. We want to sort of counter that with an, what we call an anchor. That's really just using the support hand in opposition to that pull. So it's holding the skin nice, nicely in place while the tool moves in the opposite direction. And when you get to the end of the stroke, you can do a little wiggle. Most of the strokes end at a place where there are either um, a lot of tight muscle groups, muscle attachments, or lymph centers. Um, oh, Renee Matthews says, the code is not working. Thank you. Did you try it? <laughs> Sorry for all caps. Did you try it in all caps since you've got the all caps on? I know it's good until tomorrow evening, and I'll see if um, either of my co-founders is on here and can look into it. So uh, Jill, if you are on here, Jill Munson, can you please look into our code situation? Thank you very much. And if there are ongoing issues with the uh, code, we will be sending out a newsletter and putting it on Instagram for you guys later on if there is an ongoing issue. Okay, so going back to, we've got during, uh, direction, angle, pull, pressure. Uh, oh, you haven't gone over pressure yet. You're getting into the anchoring. So we hold in opposition, wiggle at the end because of the lymph centers and tight muscles at the end of most strokes. For example, all around the ear, at the end here, there's so much activity that we can further stimulate to work for us by just doing a little shimmy with the tool. So the next thing is pressure. Pressure is one of the hardest things to actually communicate via video. And so the way that I like to do that is if you have your tool handy, you can lay the tool on your forearm and feel just the gravitational weight of the tool and then pull that along. That is your light pressure that you want to use in areas that are really delicate, around the eyes, that sort of thing, um, where we have to be very, very mindful. Now, if you imagine that um, your forearm was super tight, like you've been like lifting some heavy grocery bags, the forearm's really tight for us facialists, we're always working so much with our hands and forearms, you can sort of really get in there with the tool, like if you were massaging out that muscle, that tight muscle of the forearm, that deeper pressure is what you can use the back of the neck, tops of the shoulders, areas that are 
tight, that you have these big muscle groups and you have this thicker, more resilient skin. Now, somewhere in between those two is going to be your medium pressure that you can use on the rest of the face. But when in doubt, go lighter. You know, you can always increase pressure as you become more confident. Um, but when in doubt, go lighter with the pressure. Start out, you know, just slowly, mindfully tuning into the sensations. And then you can build it from there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I have to tell you about pressure. I think that's it for now. With the, with the wand, we're going to be using a little bit more pressure. And it looks like some folks are tuning in on the chat um, saying that the code doesn't work if there are other items in the cart. So the code can only be applied to um, the tonic and oil, not to the stones. So if you have other products in your cart, um, it might be the case that you need to do two orders. But of course, we have free domestic shipping. So that should be totally cool. Um, and someone else is saying that they're using the code and it works. So we should be good with that. It might just be that you have to uh, have only the tonic and oil in your cart if you want to use that code. So we've gone over our direction, angle, pull, pressure, anchor. Those are really the most important things. Now, the easy muffin is asking if you can go in the wrong direction. Oh, if you go in the wrong direction, can you cause more wrinkles? You know, it just does not, feel right to go like I just wouldn't especially as a facialist of 16 years all of the massages I've learned over all of my years of education were always kind of moving outward and slightly upward on the face um, with lymph drainage we go down a little bit more to drain so I just really wouldn't necessarily it just feels wrong it's wrong to go inward now on the neck you can go up or down depending on if you want to lift or if you want to drain. So the basic, oh yes, the code is Saturday student all caps for the Instagram live, that is correct. And I will be putting that in again. So for our basic gua sha routine, and we have videos for this on the site, we're starting with the U edge at the back of the neck, coming up the spine. This U edge hugs beautifully over the spine, contouring the jaw, the cheekbone. So anywhere where we basically have like a bone that's sticking out of it, again, like the spine, the jawbone, the cheekbone, the brow bone, this hugs beautifully around that to release attachments around it. Of course, on the brow, we're also going to be using lighter pressure, anything around the eye, um, we're very delicate with. And anything we want to contour also, right? Like we want to contour the jawline, contour the cheekbone, we really want those to pop. So the U edge is amazing for that. The comb edge is amazing for flat surfaces. Um, it also feels great on those tight muscle groups. So coming down with the comb edge over the top of the shoulder, up the back of the neck, to me, it feels like a more stimulating release than doing it with um, a flat edge. But if you have more sensitive skin, um, you know, thinner, really prone to redness, you might want to start using the flat edge on the face and see how that goes with very gentle pressure before graduating to using the comb edge. So we're starting the back of the neck and we come up and around. If you just imagine that the neck is divided into these vertical sections and we want to go over every section coming around with the tool. So it's as if this is like a highlighter or a marker and these are all areas we want to color in. Now on the neck, the rule of thumb is we go, when we come around to the side of the neck, down for drainage, for lymph drainage, deep puffing, clearing, and up for lifting. You can do both in one session. That would mean that you would drain first and then come around and do the lifting at the end. Um, again, we have so many tutorials to peruse for the basic routine on the website and the Instagram. And I've also on my Instagram, Britta underscore beauty, have a highlight on the neck if you want to dive deeper into that. We come around to the front of the neck with the U edge, really delicate, coming up the front of the neck, no pressure on the throat, on the windpipe. And then we come up the face section by section. Again, imagining this is our magic marker and we've divided the face now into these sections and we want to color every single section coming up. And then forehead, we can go up again 
or we can come out either way. And again, we have a lot of different tutorials and videos that you can see for the basics. Um, and I will also be doing a limited course next month to dive in really deep with all of this. So if people want to know exactly how to drain and then lift and work on all of these individual things in a way that is, you know, nearly impossible to communicate via a short tutorial or, um, you know, even a one hour session, keep your eyes peeled for that. Now on top of the gua sha basic routine that we just went over briefly and that you can again find on our website, we have our weekly tutorials that you add in to the gua sha ritual. So rather than being, you know, a full ritual on its own, that's usually something that we would add in. So if I'm showing like working on the nasal labial fold, that would come in as you're coming around and working up and then you go in and you do a little bit of work on that. But it's, they're really meant as an add in to the full routine rather than a standalone. Now on the Zoom, Marilyn is asking how long should a gua sha session last? I would say give yourself at least, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes, uh, five being like on the super express side of things. And it would maybe be something that you're just sort of like tuning in with real quick, maybe to help infuse some product um, and just give your skin a little love. A longer gua sha session can be, you know, more like 10 minutes to a half hour. And your gua sha ritual can really be, you know, as casual or as much of a ritual as you want to make it. So if you want to go ahead and light the candles, set the stage, really give yourself some time to ground and nourish, that's a great way to do your gua sha ritual. And if you really just want to watch a show, hang out on the sofa, it's a great time to pick up your gua sha tool as well. And once you've got the basics down, it becomes very kinesthetic. So you don't have to watch a video every time you're doing it. You'll sort of know going by feeling what you want to work on. All right. So again, those are the basics with the Empress Stone and your gua sha ritual. And we'll move in a little bit now more with the um, Empress Wand, which is our new tool and I'm so excited about. I've been using this shape um, in my practice for a little while now in my professional courses and it's just so amazing to be able to do you know, that deeper tension release work. It's really amazing through the jaw, through the back of the neck, tops of the shoulders. And one of the really wonderful things as well is that, you know, the, the Empress Stone gliding across the skin, again, as we talked about in the beginning, you really need to start with a clean face, um, applying your products, all of that. With this little guy, it can either be an add-in to the full ritual, or it can be a standalone. So now that I live in LA newly and I'm in traffic a lot, I've been keeping one in my car so that if I'm in bumper to bumper traffic and I'm starting to clench my jaw about the whole situation, I can just lean on in and it feels so good. You can keep it in your desk drawer at work. Um, this one again is really focused on tension release. So it's great for even like if you're getting a headache, doing some pressure points for the headache. So it's wonderful to keep at the desk. And another question about how to clean these tools. I was going, I promise I was going to get into that. Um, so first off, these are made of Beyond Stone. Um, Beyond Stone is from a mountain in China and it was created when a meteor hit that mountain, the impact created this specific stone. It contains over 40 trace minerals. That is so freaking cool. That being said, it is a stone. It's a natural stone. If you drop it on a tile floor in the bathroom, it will break. Um, just like if you dropped your rose quartz crystal from up high onto the tile floor, it would break. And so we want to be, you know, very uh, precious or with these. And we actually just came out with a pouch as well by popular demand. We created a little zipper, soft zipper pouch that your tool can live in. Um, the pouch is the size for just one tool to live on its own so they're not clanking around in there. Um, and then to wash them, it's really just soap and water. 
totally easy. Just use a natural soap and water. I use Dr. Bronner's in the sink. Um, if you tend to be pretty clumsy, you might want to put a washcloth in the bottom of the sink if you have like a porcelain sink in case you drop it um, in the sink. Uh, and that's it. And then dry them off and you're good to go. Uh, for any professionals on here, you need to sanitize your tools and implements according to your state board regulations. Always stones are not an exception to that rule. And now to get into a little bit of what we can do with the wand, I'm going to take you through a really short tuning in um, meditation. If you are somewhere where you don't need to, or where you have to have your eyes open, you can still do this with your eyes open. But for everyone that can, if you would please just close your eyes for a few seconds, taking a deep breath in. And out. In. And out. To begin square breathing, breathing in for the four count of four, inhaling. Two, three, four. Hold your breath. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Continue this square breathing. In for four, holding for four. Out for four, holding for four on your own. While we get to know our faces a bit, this is a breath that helps to regulate the nervous system get us into that rest and digest state again. Now, start to bring your hands to your face. If you have your eyes closed, bringing your hands to your jaw, to your outer jaw, doing some gentle circles there and start to just notice the skin. Start to notice the quality of the jaw muscle underneath. Does it feel tight? Does it feel like there's a bone where there shouldn't be one? Does it feel crunchy? So the jaw muscle runs just in front of the ear. It's about an inch and a half wide coming down from the cheekbone to the jaw bone. So anything hard that you're feeling there is actually your jaw muscle other than the cheekbone and jaw bone. Now coming up to the tops of your shoulders with your hands, giving a little squeeze on that muscle on the tops of the shoulder, the trapezius muscle, and just checking in how it feels. Giving the back of your neck a little love, seeing how that feels. And then bringing your fingertips up to your temples and doing a little massaging, seeing if you feel anything crunchy in the area, anything tight. And you can go ahead and open your eyes again. So I definitely notice I've got some tension in the jaw muscle, always a little crunchy up through the temple area, back of the neck. And again, these are now the areas that we are going to be addressing with the Empress Wand. Um, and there will be a video, just like we have our standard video for the Empress Stone um, on the website. There will be a tutorial video that will live on uh, the website for this as well. It's in editing as we speak. So starting with the back of the neck, like we do, we can take this hook part of the tool. So this is really great to hook into things. This is great for gripping. And then we can also use this part for pressure points as well. So we can use both ends of it. All right, so I'm gonna turn around and I hope you can see me. Now, I'm gonna take this part up the spine. So that's one way we can use it. We can come up, we can come down. 
can come across the tops of the shoulders. And this just allows me to have a deeper pressure without, you know, really hurting myself in any way. This is just like, see, it almost looks like a thumb. It's like you're, can, you can give yourself a massage either using this hook part or this part. Really put some pressure in there. Now this outer point of the shoulder, you want to avoid using pressure on for pregnancy. Um, it's a pressure point that has a strong downward energy. And so you would just, uh, you know, be gentle on your shoulders if you are pregnant. Otherwise, gua sha is completely safe. So again, we can come down the back of the neck, across the top of the shoulder. We can come up right next to the spine. And then in my professional course, I love teaching this part where we're using this part that's like a thumb to come across the base of the skull. So back where your hair ends and your neck begins at that rounding of the back of the head, you can do pressure points. To me, that feels so freaking dreamy. So, so dreamy. There's so much tension in the neck. Um, you know, as an esthetician, I spend a lot of time like this, but now everyone does. We're on our phones, we're always looking down or even on the computer and releasing the back of the neck can just feel so good. And it's essential for your skin health. Um, you know, releasing the tight musculature makes space for circulation. So fresh blood flow can come up to the face. And of course, lymph can drain out of the face as well. So that's sort of the back of the skull. Again, using it along the spine. And if you were in a situation where you didn't have product, um, you know, for that slip and glide, the pressure points are really where it's at. So you can, even using the opposite hand here, getting in to the top of the shoulder. I'm just going to push, breathe. It's really phenomenal what just holding with intention can do on a pressure point. The release is often more than if you're working for it, you know, getting in there. Now, getting into the best part, the jaw. Um, one of my favorite moves is to come down under the cheekbone. This is another one I teach in my professional course. It's like a Nike swoosh shape. And you can pause as you come along. So many muscle attachments. And right here, this is where the jaw muscle is. So we can just sit here and do a pressure point. Again, this is one that you can do if you're at your desk, in the car, in a situation where you don't have all of these, um, yeah, the product on your skin for slip and glide, you can still do this pressure point work. Okay, and then getting into the jaw a little bit more, you can actually come down. You can go up and down. You can do circles on different areas where you feel a crunchy. This is seriously amazing for TMJ. It literally already feels different. This side feels like a fist or like a brick wall and this side is already just from that little bit of work starting to soften up. Oh, so good. Okay, so then I'll show you a few ways we can use this thicker edge for pressure points. So I like to, again, I can just like lean, I've got my elbow on my desk here, just lean in and do some like pressure points throughout the temple, throughout the scalp. Again, amazing for 
headaches. And then we have this wonderful bit that even if you don't have any tool right now, I want you to find in front of your ear in sort of what would be like the root of a sideburn. If we imagine we had some fancy sideburn chops coming down, up in here, you're going to feel some crunchiness. Look for that crunchiness, for that knot of tension. Everyone has it somewhere. Sometimes it's further back, sometimes it's a little further up. And that is actually a muscle that helps, or they're like a little group of muscles that aid in like chewing and also jaw grinding, jaw clenching. So there's usually a lot of tension up in here. And again, it can contribute to headaches, but also when we have this built up tension in the face, it creates um, a square jaw shape. So from the, there's like a visual benefit of like, oh, we released this tight muscle here and now suddenly everything's more sculpted. Like the cheekbones can pop. This can actually sink in rather than being overdeveloped. But then from a sensation perspective, it just feels so good to have a released jaw, um, to be carrying less tension with you, to be able to speak your truth a little bit better because you've released that jaw. So again, coming from the jaw, then up into this area up here where there can be so much tension that contributes to that TMJ, jaw tension, all of it release that and then we can do some pressure points around the eyes as well so i can just sit here the inner corner of the eye if you wear glasses all day long or stare at a computer screen anything that strains the eyes you can just come around the orbital bone and stop every so often with light light pressure but the stone itself does so much work for you. So these are just a few ways um, of many that we can utilize this stone, this empress wand. Again, if you wanted to integrate it into your full routine, you would be working along, you know, coming up, doing your work with your empress stone, and then you could pause here switch tools and come in with the wand, do some deeper release work, and then keep going along with your routine. So that's how it integrates along with our current Empress ritual. And that's exactly how I do it in my professional treatments as well when I'm working on clients. Um, I stop somewhere that I wanna get into the nitty gritty, get into the details a little bit more, pick up my other tool, do some deeper release work, and then we move on to the next section of the face that we're working on. Now, someone is asking, is that good for sinus pressure when you have a cold? Does that help drain stuff? Now, I'm glad that you asked this because with um, sinus issues, this can be really phenomenal, you know, both doing like pressure points around all the areas that affect the sinuses, but also, um, you know, coming along with this tool. If you have allergies, awesome. Um, if you're on the tail end of a cold and you want to clear it out, awesome. If you have an acute infection, don't do gua sha. If you are like laid up on the couch, sick as a dog, you don't need to give your body extra chores to do. Your body needs rest. Again, when you're on the tail end of it, or if you're at the very beginning of it, you can do your gua sha. But when you're in that zone of just being so sick, just, just let it be. Because you're going to be moving stuff around, your body's trying so hard to fight it inside, and you just need to let it do its job. But again, um, if it's like allergy issues that aren't affiliated with like an infection, gua sha is awesome or beginning or end of a cold. All right, can I do video tutorials for the wand? 
like I have for the stone. Yes, we're just releasing the wand now, and so we don't have a whole catalog of tutorials for that yet, but we will absolutely be doing tons of wand tutorials going forward. And as I mentioned earlier as well, we're going to have that permanent video up on the website showing you a ritual that you can do with the wand, just like we have our permanent video for the Empress Stone. It's in editing right now, and it will be up very, very soon. So again, for anyone that wants to add the tonic and oil to their collection until 5 p.m. tomorrow, you can use the code SATURDAYSTUDENT all together for 20% off the tonic and oil. And it sounds like um, for anyone that's having issues checking out, you might just need to have only the tonic and oil in your cart because the 20% only applies to the products, not to the stones till 5 p.m. tomorrow. And then we've got another question. How do we sign up for the more in-depth training that will be with me personally through Britta, B-R-I-T-T-A underscore beauty, and I'll be posting more details on Instagram um, as they become available. We're putting the course together as we speak, and we'll give you all the details on that when they are ready for you. So now is the time to type in more questions. If anyone has any, um, anything really gua sha related, I'm yours for the next 10 minutes. All right, Saturday student is the code. Abby, I'll type it into the chat box here again on Zoom. Saturday student is the code. Awesome. Yay. Thanks for the love, guys. Do you have any questions? Send me your questions. I am yours. So Marilyn wants to confirm the wand does not have to be used on clean skin. That is correct. So with the Empress Stone, we're doing this gliding, right? It's all about the glide and the direction, angle, pull, pressure, and the anchor. So we're getting all of that moving, which requires tonic and oil on the skin. We don't want to put products on skin that's dirty, that has makeup on it, that's been out and about. We want to put products on clean skin. And so that's why we have to clean the skin before doing this. But if we're doing the pressure point movements that don't require that slip and glide, if we're just hanging out, doing this and that, of course, you want to keep, you know, your wand clean so you could, you know, wash that. But you can literally, as I said, keep it in your desk, keep it in your car, take it with you on the airplane and just chill out, releasing your jaw muscle because life is too short to walk around with a tight jaw. All right. Okay, now all the questions are coming in. How do I add gua sha facial into the treatment room? Um, that is a professional focused question and I do offer professional gua sha training. Um, you can go to Green Beauty Academy on Instagram for professional gua sha training. And can gua sha help release shoulder and upper shoulder and upper back tension? Oh my God, yes, gua sha is amazing for that, actually with either tool. So with the Empress Stone, we can come down. I like to, if I'm really releasing, use the opposite hand to release the shoulder so I can get in there. Um, or you can use the wand or both. Coming up the spine, down the shoulder, the upper back is a little harder to get to depending on the length of your arms and your flexibility, but for most folks, we can at least get to, you know, the tops of the shoulders, back of the neck. Okay, and now we've got someone on Instagram. I get lymph build up behind my ears. Please watch my neck highlight on Instagram. Um, I teach you, and there's also an IGTV where I teach you this move to bring it down and drain, that will be really helpful for you. 
what's the best way to help reduce saggy skin? So with saggy skin, we really want to focus on the anchoring. So if you have a lot of tissue, you're going to want to go through, keep your pressure light to medium, have your anchor, you're at 15 degrees, remember you're really close to the skin, and then you want to come along with those fingers anchoring as you go. So you've only got a little bit of space of that pull happening. So you've got a small section of pull that firms the skin so phenomenally. So for saggy skin, clients I've worked with that have had um, a lot of weight loss or loss of elasticity due to aging as well, it is freaking phenomenal. Like they can't believe it after a session. Okay, I'm gonna look over on Zoom now. When you have an active breakout on the neck, can we use the stone on it? So for active breakouts, work around them. So you want to, um, I showed in the beginning, like if I had a breakout or a mole or something I wanted to work around, you can either go like in front and behind, or you could come over like a speed bump and just sort of skip over it and then resume your stroke. So those are a few ways to work around things that you want to work around. And then, Mmm, interesting question. Tension in the chin. Yes, that can be really, really great. So you can start, you know, your jaw stroke earlier. So you can start actually right at the center of the chin and come slowly along here. And then you could even repeat that a few times. Now going with what feels good too. Once you have like some basic little skills, you can really go with what feels good on the face. Tuning in. So that would be one way to um, you know, work on the chin with the wand. You can even do some pressure points. It's a very hormonal area on the chin and there is there can be some sort of like um, textural changes in the skin, some like pitting and dimpling that happens um, as it is a very hormonal area. All right. Now, saggy skin for the upper eyelids. So doing the move along the eyebrow is really great. We want to make sure I don't have enough product on right now. You want to make sure always that you have enough lubrication. And then you can also, so you, you know, you'd repeat several times. You can take the comb edge and just give the brow a very gentle, gentle lift. Hang out there for a few breaths and then lift it all the way up. Both of those moves are excellent for um, sort of looser or hooded eyelids. A few, Kathleen wants to know if there are a few general pressure points on the face, neck, and shoulders that are great to focus on. Yeah, I showed some of those. So we can do, you know, along the jaw. We can do under the cheekbone around the orbital bone. Again, I showed a few different edges of the tool we could use for this. So this is sort of this uh, chunkier end point. Pressure is very light. I'm literally just sitting it there. And you can come around sort of corner of the eye, center of the eye, outer eye. And there are really points along so much of the, the cheekbone, jawbone, and then top of the shoulder as well as along the base of the skull. Okay. Do, do, do. Another question about can you use gua sha when you're sick and lymph might already be inflamed. So your lymph doesn't really, inflammation is interesting. We won't get into that, but if you're as sick as a dog, don't do gua sha. If you're at the tail end of a cold, do gua sha. And then Abby wants to know if the tonic and oil, the, buy, the ones that you buy separate from the kit, are they a larger size? Yes, they are full size. Um, so I don't know the ounces off the top of my head of what's in the kit, but the full size is 100 milliliters or 3.4 ounces for the tonic, and then uh, 30 milliliters or one ounce for the oil. 
believe that's the full size. But yes, they're bigger and the ounces will be listed on the product page on the website. Oh, yay. So much love here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Alyssa wants to know, am I opening a spa here in LA? Hopefully, eventually, but right now I am enjoying my relaxation so much um, that I am not in any kind of rush. And if it's meant to be, it will be. And hopefully I'll have folks to serve you guys with gua sha facials. But uh, right now it is a dream and maybe it will become a reality. And okay, so Spa Jolie Belle wants to know if this can be used for lymph work in the decollete area. So yeah, we can, I tend to, knit, I forget about certain areas of the face. There's always, we've got our blind spots, right? The chin, the nose, the decollete, I tend to forget about a little bit, but there are things that we can do in these areas. The nose, maybe not so much, it's interesting, but we can get into the decollete. And this is one of the areas, you know, I really like to teach that we pull rather than push. I find it much more effective to get that sensation of pull. That's where I find the magic really happens. But on the chest, it's actually nice to use the opposite hand. So this side can, again, this side of the decollete, chest can fully open, and we can just push that right on out. And then usually there's you know, some crunchy tension um, in this inner shoulder area. And we have a lot of lymph nodes around the armpits as well. So this is sort of pushing everything from the decollete out to that armpit. Uh, axillary lymph region, and also opening some of the muscular tension across this area. Now, Beauty for Ivy wants to know, how can we use the comb on lines and why does that work? So uh, wrinkles become very fibrous, fine lines and wrinkles become very fibrous, and this helps to break down that fibrousness. It's almost like a scar tissue type quality. And when we do the friction, Again, lots of tutorials for that on um, the highlights in the IGTV, all of that. That helps to break down the fibrous quality that wrinkles lines have developed from sort of being that place of folding over and over where the expression happens in the face. Do, do, do. So uh, now someone's asking about what kind of pressure. We did go over the pressure a little bit earlier on, and this will be recorded so you can revisit. Um, it's probably about 10 minutes in that we go over pressure. All right, and this is the last question I'll be answering today from Marilyn. Lastly, I have active breakouts. Can I just drain my neck? And how many times a week can I do that? Yes, definitely. Not only draining the neck, but also opening the back of the neck. Um, you know, can, if there aren't any breakouts on the back of the neck, releasing the muscular tension on the back of the neck and around the skull is going to be so, so good for giving your body or your skin the resources from your circulation and detoxification to heal. So do the drainage work. Again, there's tutorials on that. Um, go through my IGTV at Britta underscore beauty and open up the back of the neck. Ideally, Marilyn, if you really wanted to be working on this, I would say every day, and it wouldn't have to be a huge commitment since you're just working on the neck, maybe five minutes. And again, it can also be something that you're doing um, you know, while you're watching like TV. I, like, I love TV. I love watching TV at night. I'll admit it guilty pleasure. Um, so like while you're relaxing, whatever it is that you're doing, you can do a little bit of gua sha then because after you've done it a handful of times, you're going to know the routine, you're going to know what feels good, and you won't have to do a video every time. So you can do it while you're relaxing or doing something else as well, or make it your beautiful meditation. It's really up to you. Oh, thank you, Lonnie. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, my darlings, I am going to sign off now. Again, this will be recorded if you need to revisit it for whatever reason. Thank you so much for joining me today on a Saturday. I hope it's been helpful. And again, 
The code is Saturday Student if you want 20% off the full size oil and tonic. Lots of love to all of you.